This video is sponsored by Loop Deck. Hello friends, so Lightroom. Now this is a app that's a staple in the majority of photographers workflows and it's the editing software that most photographers will use. I know I use it every single day and I know it back to front inside and out. Hell, I even made a course on it. But because it is such a workhorse and such a staple in so many people's workflows, sometimes it can get a little bit you know, stale, right? Doing the same method and the same process and the same workflow over and over and over again, day in and day out, things can get a little bit stale. And so sometimes you need to freshen things up a little bit, right? So when Loop Deck reached out to me and wanted to send me some of their units to, to try out, I was super stoked to, to see whether or not you could add some spice to my workflow and whether it could change things up a little bit. And, you know, for me, like I've had my eye on Loop Deck, the product for ver such a very, very long, long time, all the way back to the very first iteration uh, of the Loop Deck. And, you know, up until this point now, they've made so many different other releases. They've made you know, the Loop Deck Plus, the Loop Deck Live, and then this guy that we're going to talk about in this video, which is called the Loop Deck CT or Creative Tool. The Loop Deck CT is a additional peripheral that complements your mouse and keyboard and it assists you in you know, navigating through all of your different apps and even the OS as well, giving you more control and more different, I guess, ways to control those apps as well. It has integrations with all of your favorite apps, you know, things like Photoshop and After Effects and Final Cut Pro and Premiere and, and Ableton and a whole bunch of good stuff, right? But of course, today in today's video, we're going to be talking about none other than Lightroom. Now, I've been using the Loop Deck CT to edit some of my photos over the last few weeks. And it's been an interesting journey to say the least, you know, having such a I guess a tactile visceral kind of experience when editing my work is has been very very interesting and so I want to take you through that. So, you know, in this video I'll show you what this tool is all about and then we'll go through an end-to-end -end workflow of how I will use the Loop Deck throughout my entire workflow process. But first, let's get a little bit more familiar with the device itself. First things first, it comes in a lovely box which includes the Loop Deck CT itself and a very high quality braided cable. The build quality here of this device is actually really good. The main body is made of a high quality plastic while the cover and the dials are made of aluminum. At the top, there's a touch screen that features a total of 18 touch buttons that change the face. Depending on what app you're using, it'll go ahead and change those dynamically flanked around the sides, there are six dials that really allow precise control. And these dials also function like buttons as well in that they can be all pressed down. Under the top section, we have eight programmable buttons that you can assign anything to. And then below that is a gorgeous giant dial with a touchscreen display in the middle. Flanked on either side of the big dial, a 12 more buttons split on either side, which you can again use to customize to absolutely anything that you want. To control the Loop Deck CT, you use the Loop Deck app. And in the app, you're able to assign almost any function to almost any button or dial by just dragging and dropping. Media controls, shortcuts, macros, launching apps, the options, whatever you can think of it, it's probably able to be done with the Loop Deck CT. There's also integrations with dozens more apps that give you a head start on personalization and the defaults are really well thought out and easy to use. Personally, on a day-to-day -day basis, aside from all the creative apps that I use Loop Deck for, I actually use it quite a lot as a media controller. So I'll have the, you know, the media buttons up the top controlling Spotify, and then I've remapped the big dial down the bottom to the volume. But you know, again, your, your options are, are limitless and I could spend all day talking about all of the different ways and the customizations for all of the different apps that I use. But for now, you know, let's talk about the Loop Deck CT in Lightroom because I've really been enjoying the, the tactile feel of editing with this tool. Now to preface, I will say that the learning curve with the Loop Deck is actually quite high. It will take you a little while to get used to the controls and the dials and the buttons and uh, the taxonomy and how things are categorized and organized with the software and with the actual hardware itself. But if you know Lightroom, you know, you'll know that it's so 
so insane in terms of the number of controls and functions and things there are to do. So, you know, trying to boil all of those things down, all of those abilities and, and features down into a, a very small compact form factor with dials and buttons is actually super, super hard, right? So, you know, there's a, a definitely a learning curve with the, the tool. For me, the way that I've decided to tackle the learning curve is that I've taught myself the actions in Lightroom that are really nice to use from a tactile perspective and then I've stacked those actions on top of one another to start to create my workflow and so you know for me the loop deck is not a a replacement of the mouse and keyboard but rather it's a supplement to it and you know I tend to use it for things like exposure and presets and then I'll use the mouse for things like color and the tone curve and things that need like really uh pointed control but you know let's dive into Lightroom and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right so we're in Lightroom and I recently went to Vietnam so all of these images are going to be some of my shots from Vietnam and so with this the loop deck will automatically switch modes depending on if I'm in Lightroom mode or like develop mode which is kind of neat like that and then I'll switch back and I'll show you how it changes in a little bit. Uh, but how I've set the library module settings up here is that I've got the big wheel changing and scrubbing through all of my images here. And then the button in the middle, I've got it as the grid or lupe view. So it toggles between whether or not I want a grid view like this or whether or not I want a single image view like that. When it is in grid view, I can change my thumb size so I can make it bigger or smaller like this and that makes scrubbing through all of these images super super fast and again from the grid view I can use the wheel and, and jog around and try and scrub through like that in a very linear fashion uh, but what I found is that using the mass wheel up and down that I have in conjunction with the you know the thumbnail size like this allows me to just like zoom out really quickly you know, scan through a bunch of different images very, very quickly and then, you know, zone in very, very quickly as well on the set of photos that I want to use as an example. From there, selecting an image, I have this dial set up as the zoom. So if I want to check focus or something like that, for example, I can zoom in here and I can see that, you know, the photos are tacked up. So that's great. Or I could press in on the dial and go back into the grid view as well. I tend to find that I need a, an option to hide my panels quite often. So I've added that here on the top left button like that. And this just gives me a bunch more space to be able to see a bunch more different images all at once. I've also set up the loop deck so that I can categorize the images as well. So typically I will use a rating system from a one to four, which is the middle row that I have here. And then I'll also use things like the quick collections, I'll use flags, and then I typically will use color. So then I've got them all set up here on the bottom row so that I can quickly organize and select any of the images that I need to select. From here as well, sometimes if I want to check the exposure or like I know that an image hasn't been shot in exactly spot on exposure or I like underexposed it or, or something like that, I might go into the grid view here and then press an auto turn button up at the top right just to see what it looks like when I go and you know potentially perform a exposure change on that. So for me, I have all of these options set to one. So one is my general library button here. And so if we, let's say for example, I don't know, let's just like try and find an image. Uh, let's try and go to one of, these ones like this one for example I think this is one is an image that looks pretty nice from here if we want to develop this and start to to make an edit I have all of my edit options under number two all right so we're in the develop module and I'll quickly walk through how everything is set up so you know, on the develop module here, I have a couple of options for the dials. I have exposure, then highlights, then whites, shadows, and then blacks, and then temperature here on this dial. And then with the touch buttons here, I've got copy and paste the develop options that you've done, uh, auto tone, and then presets, uh, the healing, 
and then the crop and then some of the masking tools down there and then color adjustments, which I don't often use, but I wanna show you the power of anyway in this video. With the presets, I have them labeled here. So you can actually set each button as like text specifically if you wanna get creative and you wanna say, for example, just label them. And then I have them labeled horizontally like this. So all of my portraits are in this row, my commonly used landscapes are in this row and commonly used urban uh, presets are on this row. So that's pretty much it. Uh, and that gets you the majority of the way for me. So like if I wasn't doing this video and I was just editing this image for myself, what I would typically do is go auto tone, develop presets. I would put a preset on straight away, go back into uh, basic adjustments, quickly change my exposure, you know, bring my highlights down and get some of the detail back, bring the whites up as well to compensate. Uh, bring down some of the shadows, bring down some of the blacks for this particular preset. And then if I wanted to post Instagram, for example, I would go four by five, I would rotate it by 90 and then maybe shift this over just a little bit, apply that, and then that's kind of it. And that's actually how fast it could be. And that's how fast it actually is for me most of the time when I'm using the loop deck. But for the sake of this video, I will go through one by one from the beginning of how I might do it manually, uh, just to show you guys the power of, you know, what you can potentially do and how you might want to set this up for yourself as well. So. With this particular uh, setup that I've got here on the develop module, I've set E to reset. So that resets the image completely. And that brings this back to the default. So let's run through from the very beginning how I would typically edit this image. So the very first thing I would do is try and like reset the image back to a good baseline. So uh, lens corrections if I needed any, and then I would set my exposure correctly. So right now the exposure, I think it's a little bit low. So I'll just bring this down just a little bit and I'll show you guys what's happening on the right here as well. Uh, I definitely wanna, you know, bring down the highlights just to bring some of the detail back. And then I'll offset that by bringing up some of the whites as well, just to increase the brightness just a little bit. From there, I, you know, I wanna bring up the shadows just a little bit here so that I can have a little bit more information to work with. So I'll do that. And then I will leave the blacks for now. From here, I will typically then work on contrast. Now contrast, I don't typically do with the loop deck just because I feel that it needs a little bit more of a pointed tool. So for me, the mouse is actually a lot better. You can do it with the loop deck and there are settings and customizations for it if you wanna do that, but I prefer using the mouse for, for this particular tool. So in this instance, what I'll do is I'll add contrast using the tone curve like this, using my mouse, something like that, just to show a very basic S curve. I'll uh, readjust the exposure just a little bit like that and then actually bring down some of the whites because that's a little bit too harsh for my eyes right now. Highlights as well. That's looking pretty good. We're getting there, we're getting there. From here, you can do color adjustments uh, if you want to. So the power of the loop deck is such that you know, when you go into color, I've got color set up so that there are all of these different options and uh, settings here. Some of them I've left default from the actual default uh, profile that you get with a whole bunch of the different creative apps that you might be able to, to use with the loop deck. But for this, I actually, you know, I don't use it because there's just so many options. So for example, if I go into hue, you can actually scroll through all of these different options for the hue. And then you can control them directly with the wheel like this. And then if you don't like that option, then you can just quickly undo. But I find for me, that's just a little bit too slow. So most of the times I find myself using the mouse for color because I feel that, you know, there's a lot of different options when it comes to color and using the mouse is just a little bit faster for me and doesn't require as fine control. Uh, so I tend to use the mouse for, for color stuff. But one thing that I do love about the color grading aspect when it comes to the loop deck is actually the color grading. So you can actually map 
the color grading to the dial. So here I've got the color grading for the highlights or the split tone for the highlights mapped here on these two and then the shadows on these two. So instead of like messing around on the mouse like, like this or, you know, like this, for example, and then kind of like fiddling around everywhere and, and all that kind of stuff, but what you can actually do is actually rotate this dial and it feels a lot more intuitive to change it in this way, in my opinion. And then if you don't want those changes, you can always just press in the dials and that will, you know, get rid of the, the options for you. But I feel that that for, for specifically for color grading, the dials here are much more intuitive than using the mouse. So something to consider. But most of the time, I will actually just go through one by one and you know use the mouse to, to then go and change each one of the HSL options individually, or I'll just use a preset because I have a whole bunch of set colors that I typically use. So in this instance, you know, I'll I'll do that for let's say this one. So, you know, let's do something like that for example. And that's it, presets are as easy as that. And then after I've done the color, I'll go through effects in detail. And if I haven't added a preset, then I'll go and like change them all individually. For me, I really try to, to keep this loop deck very clean. And I have only, you know, the very start of the process attached to the editing process for me. And I'll continue to add things more and more over time. However, I feel that there are, again, certain things that are really good for the loop deck that are just really nice and really tactile to use and intuitive to use on this device. So I'll keep them and try and, you know, play to the, the strong suits of the loop deck. But it is a nice experience being able to, you know, change the exposure and change all the different things and, you know, scroll around to all of the the different images really, really quickly and, and being able to to change things in that way. All right, and that's just really a taste of what the loop deck CT can really do. And honestly, I've only been using it for, you know, a couple of weeks and I'm constantly, you know, adding things and slowly changing my behavior of how I can get the most out of the tactility and the experience of this particular tool. And it's been fun. And I think I will continue to keep trying to get faster and better at this tool. And I'm excited to see how it changes my workflow even more over time. If you think this is something interesting for yourself and you want to add a little bit of tactility and a little bit of novelty and a little bit of speed to your workflow and change up your experience in Lightroom in this way, then you know hit the very first link in the description box below and check out the Loop Deck CT or the other Loop Decks that they have available as well. A big thank you to Loop Deck for sponsoring this video and for sending this thing out. It was really fun to, to try out. Thank you so much. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one, but until then, get out there and make something that matters. Peace.